What's up, Momos? Welcome to my channel. What's up, baby? What do you got for us? <laughs> Talk to us. Today we're at the gym, but we're doing a in the life vlog Q and A because you guys sent in a lot of questions about postpartum. So I figured I'd answer those questions as we go about our day. I love it. I love the different locations. That really spices things up. Yes. So we're at the gym right now. I've got baby boy on me and we're walking laps. <laughs> His face is buried. First question is, is mom life what you expected? I'd say it's way better. <laughs> I just didn't know what to expect, really. Like, I've been a nanny and stuff, but it's just not the same. Although it did help me and prepare me a lot, I think. But even in being a nanny, like being a mom, there were just, there have been so many things that I just did not know or expect or whatever so it's been very very challenging it's the most challenging thing i've ever done in my whole life but so rewarding like i feel truly like i am walking out my calling my i just feel very fulfilled would you say you feel very primal primal like you are walking out <laughs> your truest <laughs> primalist oh. functions yes. of of keeping a baby alive and sustaining him with your own mother's milk yes i do feel very primal i know there are many moms out there who don't breastfeed and that's fine you do you. primal you're still keeping your child alive and that's what matters <laughs> mom life winning Just got done at the gym. So I've noticed I've gotten two acne spots, which I know is nothing to complain about. But like, they're just bright and right there in your face. So that's fun. Anywho, off to get food. And some of you might be like, you're filming and driving. Well, my gym literally is backed up to the restaurant that I'm going to go to, which is Schlotsky's. I'm going to try my wallet, yes. Um, so it's really not too big of a deal. Okay, hey, hey, Jordan. Hi, right, um, just one minute. Can I do the roast beef and cheese? Thank you. I don't know why I've never ordered that sandwich in my life, but roast beef for some reason just sounds really good right now. <laughs> Baby boy's back there, as you can see, driving. <laughs> oh no, he's sad. Hang on, buddy, we're gonna park and I'm gonna come back there and sit with you and then I'll feed you. It's snowing out and I'm just not about that. I am not about that. Um, also, I did order a Coke, so I'm allowing myself one Coke a week and I usually drink it right after I breastfed Luca because then I have like, like the caffeine and stuff wears off within two hours or wears off whatever is not in his milk after two hours. So I'm not like giving him a bunch of caffeine. One moment. So guys, breastfeeding, let's just talk about breastfeeding for a minute. <laughs> It's stinking hard. Even when it's easy, it's hard. Don't worry guys, I don't wanna do this while driving. <laughs> Breastfeeding is very hard and very easy. I don't know, it's super weird. It's not very easy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But like, even when it is easy for me, it's still challenging. So we've had a roller coaster ride. <sighs> and I know that that's pretty normal. I know that like, I've heard and read and been told many times that the first three months of breastfeeding are very up and down. What is this guy doing? Um, but that if you can make it past three months, you're good. So we're two months in. 
One month to go. <laughs> I will trust my Savior Jesus when my darkest thoughts before. Just a when to simply trust him seems the hardest thing of all. <laughs> Jesus, only Jesus, help me trust you more and more. I'm going to take out one bite of my sandwich. And then he's going to be like, oh, my skinny. <laughs> I'm the one who's supposed to be eating. Let's see if this is any good. Oh, I forgot to tell him to take the onion off. So, one thing I've been told is that onions cause gas in babies. So, I've been trying not to eat onion. Not bad. Not bad. Hi. So, woo. He is a Mr. Smiley boy, and I'm so happy about it. It's the cutest thing ever. Let's see if I can talk and him not get mad, because he really loves to focus. He wants full silence while breastfeeding. <laughs> Which, hey man, I get it. Like, you gotta focus on that food. Next question that someone asked is, what do I actually need to have after birth to like help me heal? you know, postpartum stuff. And that is an interesting question. For one reason, one reason only. I have a full on suitcase full of items that I ended up not using at all postpartum. Part of them, part of that reason is because I didn't have a vaginal birth and a lot of the stuff that I had was like pads, um, ice pads, uh, big diaper things. Um, granted, I still bled, obviously, after birth for four weeks, by the way. Ugh. The Frida baby underwear, it's like gray. I'll try to pop a picture up. Those things I lived in for a month. Like, I wore them every day. They were so comfy. They didn't, like, annoy my incision. They were just, like, almost kind of flattering because they fully covered my belly and just, like, sucked everything in. <laughs> Um, so that was nice. Oh. Definitely those. Like, vaginal or C-section, get those things. I just got, like, big maxi pads. That was really, like, I didn't get those giant diapers. Those things are terrible, guys. Like, don't fool, f fall for that. I don't know. Maybe you'll find some that you love, but I did not. I tried several different brands, too. But one thing that I would really focus on postpartum is your nutrition. Um... It's really good to eat and drink lots of warm things after you give birth. It's very healing to the body. So like bone broths, teas, even just warm water with like lemon, which I didn't do that, but just an example. Oatmeal. I mean, honestly, warm banana bran. Focus on getting whole foods in. And oh my goodness, you guys, I'm, I'm still struggling with this, but the amount of water that we're supposed to drink is just absurd. So like get a bunch of water bottles to have around the house because if you only have one, which I only have one currently and I'm finding it's very annoying, you know, you're lugging that thing everywhere. You need to have one in each room or something that you can just sip from. My milkman. <laughs> Another thing as far as healing goes, one thing that I noticed that I think really has helped me is that really like as soon as they took the catheter out of me, because I had one in for a pee and stuff um, during surgery and for like several hours after surgery, um, as soon as they took that out, like I got up and walked. Granted, like I walked four steps. It was like, hey, time to go back into the bed. But like... I got home from the hospital several days later and took a walk. It was very, very slow. 
and I used the stroller basically as my walker. But I did that every day after that, almost every day. And I think that that really helped my healing and I think it helped just my mental health of getting outside. It's good for you, good for baby. Obviously, if you have a baby in the winter time, it's a little bit harder. Um, I was lucky to get a few months still of, a oh. few weeks still of good weather. And now I'm to the point where I'm getting out and about and like can go walk the mall or go walk at my gym. Um, and so that's good. But yeah, try to walk, even if it's just around the house. All right, all fed. All fed and the happy boy. Except I need to change his diaper, so we got to do that. And then we're going to Target. Target. For those of you less fancier people out there. <laughs> Are you happy boy? Little man is asleep back there so I figured we've got a few minutes before he wakes up. <laughs> we went to Target, fun times. So the next question that someone asked was how are you feeling about your body postpartum? And I'll be honest, like I really haven't thought too too much about it but I do have moments where I'm like my body is not what it once was especially because when I got pregnant like I was in the best shape of my life <laughs> that I've ever been in and you know I do feel like that helped me throughout my entire pregnancy and postpartum because I lost pretty much all of the weight I have about five pounds left and I have a feeling it's gonna hold on as tight as it can <laughs> um, which is fine I'm not like worried about getting back to my weight um, the most important thing that I want is just knowing that I'm eating right and being active taking care of myself that's what's important and taking care of my body so that I can feed this little guy back there but yesterday actually i was just like noticing like towards the end of the day it's like my skin on my belly just gets like even looser <laughs> like it's already kind of loose but it's just like becomes really loose at the end of the day <laughs> you know how like by the end of the day you're you have more of a little pooch in your belly because you've eaten throughout the day and like it's normal well I feel like mine is no longer like a little belly it's just like flabby skin <laughs> on my stomach <laughs> and I don't love that not gonna lie because it's just not what I'm used to I mean even in pregnancy it was like a really tight big belly and now it's like this loose skin and really like in all reality it's not that bad but it's not what I'm used to and so you know it is kind of a struggle I think the biggest thing that I've struggled as far as my body goes is my scar just because it's like I wasn't supposed to have that <laughs> I've got this big old scar now across my stomach lower abdomen wherever it is it's just like this was not supposed to be on me. I was not supposed to have this giant scar that has a ton of scar tissue around it. It's like solid rock around my stomach in certain areas sometimes that like I have to massage out and like hearing about the kind of like long-term effects of scars, C-section scars. I'm like, what in the heck? Like, are you kidding me? Ugh. So, I don't know that's that's been interesting like I don't really care about the appearance but it has been something that I'm just like dang I was not supposed to have this but then I look at my little baby and I'm like you're amazing and it doesn't matter <laughs> so yeah okay the next question is a good one it's did you enjoy having the visitors postpartum or did you prefer more alone time? <sighs> so, we had a lot of visitors. I have a big family, 
Paul has a big family. We have friends. It's a grand old time. And we have an amazing church. We had a meal train. It got to a point where it was, I could not do it anymore. I felt like it was happening where every single day we had a visitor and like I couldn't get into a rhythm because I was constantly being interrupted <laughs> by guests, which I love all those people, but yeah, I don't know. I would not do that again, honestly. Like I would not, I don't think if, if, if we ever have another child, I don't think I'll allow visitors for the first two weeks. Except for like my mom and dad, Paul's mom and dad. That's it. Everyone else can wait because I just need a minute, man. Like not only had I just had a child, I just had a very, very traumatic birth, surgery, recovery was rough in the sense of I was just so weak and so out of it for a very long time it felt like and then had a newborn on top of that trying to take care of him like uh no visitors can wait all right next question is postpartum sex i had to be cleared six weeks so we did not have sex for six weeks we maybe did some other things, <laughs> um, but after the six week mark, a few days later, like I was ready at the six week mark to have sex, personally. Um, I know some women, it takes longer. I was scared because I had heard that C-section, sex after a C-section is painful, which is weird because you would think like, oh, you're totally fine because you didn't have a baby vaginally, but no. Apparently it hurts and I will say it was uncomfortable, but I did still get satisfied, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so was it that hurtful, painful? I don't know. Then second time around, it actually maybe hurt a little more than the first time, but then after that, good to go so i don't know just go at your pace make sure ladies that you're turned on like maybe this is tmi but like get your husbands to turn you on good <laughs> and that will help i think take your mind off of the discomfort i texted my sister-in-law and was like does it hurt and because she had a c-section with her last child and she was like it feels like they have to break through a dam of scar tissue so yes and i was like <gasps> and i don't know if that's what it felt like for me eh, honestly yeah that's a pretty good description it just felt like the path had to be cleared out <laughs> i don't know that's you know you asked so i'm telling but also because no one ever talks about this stuff and it is kind of important to know when it comes to sex so there's that question but now everything's back to normal when it comes to sex now as far as schedule wise that's interesting because there's a baby <laughs> and yeah figuring all that out is fun times but we make it work we're, we're still figuring it out and i'm sure it'll smooth out more as we go nighttime duties but he's out grocery shopping for us so 
I took the nighttime duties. This vlog has been interesting. I don't feel like it was really like a day in the life. It was more like a popping in to answer a question here, popping in answer a question here, still in my car, popping in now on the couch. So my hope is that within the next few weeks or so, I can get it down more where I have a camera or Paul is with me like helping me vlog until I can figure out how to do it on my own because I don't know how any mother does it. How in the world do you guys know the, the videos that are like 24 hours with the newborn? How? How do they do it? Because I could not even fathom one. Like there are some moms who do it literally while they're still in the hospital. But yeah, definitely could not have done that. But then like most of them are a week or two after they've gotten home. I'm like, I'm eight weeks in and eh, 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 ain't doing no 24 hours with a newborn video. Also, he's no longer. <laughs> so sad when babies they cry out in their sleep and they're like, oh, oh, it's so sad. But then they're fine. They're like, mm. like oh, I'm over here scarred for life and they're, he's fine. Okay. Anywho, what I was saying was hopefully I'll get to a true day in the life vlog. Be honest. Are you getting sleep or are you miserable? <laughs> I thought that was funny the way the person wrote that. So to all of those people who were like, saying goodbye to your sleep, oh, you are not going to sleep better than when you weren't, we really didn't have kids. Well, to that I say, you know, it's not totally true. I understand why they say those very negative Nancy things, but honestly, the first few weeks were rough and I had to kind of, it was trial and error figuring out, okay, when can I sleep? <laughs> um, because I was breastfeeding and am breastfeeding. So throughout the night, you know, I'm getting up and feeding him. It's not like Paul could. I didn't want to do bottles. Um, I didn't want to have to like pump and it was just, I just was very confused by all that. So I was like, I'm just gonna do it. Um, granted, Paul was very sweet and would get up with me and like just kind of like rub my arm. <laughs> but now, from like six weeks on, Luca started sleeping. At first, it was six hours through the night and like a six hour stint. And then he'd wake up, I'd feed him, and then he'd sleep another four showers and we'd get up for the day. Then it was seven, then it was eight, and now he's at nine hours. He's sleeping nine hours a night, you guys. And like, sleeps nine hours, wakes up, feeds, sleeps another like three-ish hours. So I'm getting sleep and I'll tell you what, it's deep sleep because I'm tired. But my mother instincts still very much like kick in like, Although it's a deep sleep, it's not a deep sleep. I don't know how to explain it. But like, if he makes a peep, I'm like, mm. I've gotten to a point where I don't wake up unless he's actually like awake awake. Granted, there were many weeks, early weeks, where every little noise he made, I was like, mm. Mm. and so I was not sleeping very much then, but now I'm sleeping more. Last night, for some reason, I personally couldn't fall asleep until like midnight. And he decided he wanted to wake up at five last yesterday instead of seven like he had been. So that was a little harder on me. And that's why I am like this. But to all those pregnant first time moms out there, you're gonna sleep, okay? So just, you figure it out. You know, Paul and I have figured out a routine that's really nice. Obviously, I, I take my time 
Yes, I saw you did a read it or pass. I did a read it or pass on Instagram. I was enjoying <laughs> myself, but in all reality, I was looking at the list like, there's a lot on this list. Yeah, usually I do like the big shopping trips. Yeah, and then I go to check out. I don't want to go through a self checkout with all that stuff. <laughs> Which I rarely ever want to go through the self checkout. He never wants to go through. The unless I have like two items. Even then, there was only one <laughs> line open, and the lady, bless of her course, heart, bless Walmart. Her, right, Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> there's pluses and minuses to every grocery <laughs> store. The lady, bless her heart, was very old and very slow. Oh no! Go get the rest of the groceries. <laughs> I guess I better help him put them away. Only the best for our baby's bottom, Angel Soft, where your baby comes to roost. Come tell us what it's like to be a father. <laughs> what it's like to be a father. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still pretty early on, so I got already anticipate so many different stages of fatherhood mm -hmm. and uh right now is i don't know i think i told morgan i feel a deeper bond to luca from his baby stage than i maybe expected to mm -hmm. i really love him i love the, <laughs> the guy and just being close to him i come up at night and he's already asleep and i wish that i could wake him up just to <laughs> You know, look at him and him look at me and kiss him. <laughs> but, I mean, Morgan is definitely doing the the brunt of things. She's with him more than I am and so forth. But uh, it's just a really surreal, special thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, you guys, it's like four days later since I vlogged. <laughs> It ain't easy, y'all. It ain't easy. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Bless you, my baby. <laughs> and I will get back into a more regular flow, but I'm trying not to put pressure on myself and just, you know, enjoy these moments with my little babe and take it all in. Man, you're so talented. <laughs> He's down here using his little jumper bouncer thing. No, he's not buckled in. Don't sue me. I'm sitting right beside him and he ain't going nowhere. Um, I do actually almost always buckle him in, so calm down. But he loves these little things. These little like high contrast hanger dangly things. I got them through the Love Every Play Kit, um, the looker kit. And also we got the gym, play gym kit, which is really fun. You guys, Love Every is like so cool. Like what in the world? The looker kit is like from zero weeks to 12 weeks old. And the play gym is for forever. But so many fun things to like cycle through and all good for baby's brain and his little mind. That's the same thing as his brain and his eyes and his coordination skills. So love you guys so much. Comment below and let me know like what mama content do you want to see on here? Because I'm a mom with a baby now. <laughs> Can you believe it? I cannot either. I was literally holding him last night just looking at him and I just started crying. So I was like, you are my child. This is real. So, yeah, that's probably never going to end. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you very soon. Remember, Jesus is the answer. Love you guys. Bye.